Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're going to be acquiring some land and building up some attractions in Ten Penny Parks. In this game, everybody begins with a plot of land and some money, and it is up to you to buy some rides, build them correctly, landscape the place a little bit, make money, and ultimately have the most victory points. In the game, you are simply trying to manage your time and especially manage, like I said, that money. Money's very tight in this game. There's an interesting positional geometry to the game. It's kind of a polyomino game, but the way in which you can build the rides is very interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. I'll show you on the table and we'll come on back for some final thoughts. The game's going to be played over five months, tracked right here, and each of those months is going to have five different steps. Beginning with the income step, followed by the actions step, bonuses from these tracks right here, the advertising step where you can buy victory points, and then a cleanup step to ready it for the next month. At the end of the game, you're going to get victory points from a few different things. So the goal cards, you begin with two of these. For each one of those you complete, you get three victory points. The attraction tiles, basically purchasing these attractions here, comes with victory points. The emotion tracks for thrill, awe, and joy here. If you're high up enough on them, you're going to get a bonus uh, of victory points. And then the number of attractions you have. If you have enough attractions, six or seven, you're going to get five points. Eight or more attractions, you're going to get ten points. Whoever has the most points, of course, is the winner. And you will get some victory points throughout the game, generally from advertising. So let's go ahead and go to the uh, round structure. So each player has a board that they begin with. In each of the spots marked with a tree, you're going to put out one of these little wooden tree pieces. You begin with seven bucks and then your three workers right here. So I've got here these two players. I haven't given them any money or a board. You just assume they have it, okay? And so we begin with the income step. Every player gets three dollars plus any income they would get from attractions or uh, stands that they have. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my three. Obviously during the very first turn, it's just three. So you really begin the first round with ten bucks, okay? After that, we go to the actions step. Starting with a player who has the first player marker right here, we're going to go around taking three of these actions, one for each worker. So you can go to a few different places. You can go to one of the attractions. You're going to buy that attraction. These are once per round places. So for example, if I want to buy Ray Gun Alley here, I would go to this location, I would take that, I would build it, keep the card, and uh, no one else can go to that stack, that location, this entire round. Now you'll notice all the locations will have their cost modified by this central carousel. So right here it says plus one. So if I want to buy this, I'm actually going to pay four coins. If I want to buy this one, it's four plus two, so I'll actually pay six for that. So that's the first uh, kind of place you can go into is the, the attractions. And again, they're exclusive. One person can go there per round. The other places then are these characters, and those are not limited. You can keep going there. They're very straightforward. So you can go to the banker here and get two dollars. You can go to the realtor and buy one of these two top tiles to grow your uh, park grounds. You can go to the contractor and get one of these stands, put that into your park. Or you can go to the arborist and chop down two of your trees in order to make room for tiles to sit in there. So, my first thing might be, let's go ahead and go with that Ray Gun Alley. I'll go ahead and show you that. So I pay four, three plus one. I give up that money, and I find the corresponding tile. First, they'll have a color. So this is the stack that has that color. And then I find the matching tile, Ray Gun Alley right here. Shows me in the bottom corner what shape it'll be, so I see that there. I'm going to take this. I'm going to place this somewhere where it fits. It cannot go over trees, of course, cannot overhang, all those obvious things. Anything you cover with it, you are going to get. So if I put it right here, I'm going to get two bucks right now for covering that spot. If I put it over any of these, I'm going to move up on the corresponding track, and then the one in the center happens to be wild. I can move up on any track. So I will go ahead and put it right there. I'll get my two bucks from doing that. And then this card sticks with me because 
It gives me victory points, of course, and I'll also be able to advertise this ride as being part of my park later on for victory points. But, before I do that, I need to make sure I check the symbols right here down the side below the victory points. So right now it shows me one blue symbol, which stands for Thrill. So I'll move my piece up one on the Thrill track right there, and then I can keep this just like so. Then the next player will go, and so this player might go, they'll buy this, they'll take the matching thing, they will build it. Purple player might go, maybe they just uh, want uh, more money, so they might go there. And then it comes back to me, and I can choose to take another one of these actions. Now here's a thing that to consider when you are building everything in your park. This includes all of the rides and all of the stands. Everything can, at most, touch something else corner to corner only. So for example, if I choose to go to the contractor and take one of these tiles, let's say a hot dog stand here, which is going to increase my income by two dollars every time uh, we go to the income step, I cannot put it next to a tile I've already built. Side by side is not a legal placement. Corner to corner is fine, okay? So perhaps I'll take this one and put it over uh, this spot so that I can then build corner to corner right here and cover those two hearts. Because if I put it there, I'm, uh, I'm denying myself all the four spaces around it. So maybe I'll do that. I'll put it there. I do not get that money right now. I'll get it during the income step. And then maybe my last place after the other players have gone is the arborist in which I'll remove some buildings. Maybe, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, some uh, trees. Maybe I'll take that and that away. And those are gone. And so that's it. The other players, as they purchase things, will move up on these tracks themselves. So perhaps we'll do uh, something like that. Maybe this will be the way this works out. Uh, this player got to there, okay? So that's it for the actions step, and those are all the possible actions you can take. Then we go to the bonuses step. The bonuses step involves the tracks right here. Starting from the top one, we check who is in first place, they'll get some bonus. And if it's a three or four player game, which it is, then second place also will get a bonus. So, the first one, the thrill track. If you're in first place, you may choose to move back one and take this extra worker for the next month. Or, you can simply stay where you are and get a victory point. For the second track, you can choose to step back and become the first player, or you can take a victory point and stay where you are. And then for the last one, you can step back, get three dollars, or stay where you are and get a victory point. By the way, during this middle track, if you do not take the first player marker, you need to give it to someone else. The second place for three or four player games are always the same, simply one victory point for each player. And then we are done with the bonuses. And we go to the advertising step. During the advertising step, you can advertise every one of your rides based on the conversion that's printed on the back. So for example, for Ray Gun Alley here, I can pay one dollar and get one victory point. But if we look at, let's say, this one, the Bandit Shootout, if I had built that as well, I can pay four dollars and get three victory points for that. It also would have given me on the front, it shows you the shape, and it would have given me two symbols in the thrill track, also three victory points at the end, and it's not inexpensive. So I can choose to advertise all of my rides once each, giving up money to do that. And then we go to the cleanup step in which we refresh the concessions, they all go away and we reveal a number equal to the number of players plus two, I'm sorry, times two. We return the workers, we take them all back, whoever the start player is, is going to rotate the carousel to adjust the prices. You have to move it. And um, if you, of course, are, gave this to somebody else, you gave them that ability both to be first and to rotate this however they want to. So maybe they'll go ahead and make, the, uh, they want this, so maybe they'll make that inexpensive or, you know, put it at the minus two. They might do that. <clears throat> And then we go to the next income step for the next month in which we make money. So again, the money comes from the three you always begin with, and some some of the, uh, the stands will give you money, like the hot dog stands, these balloons give you money, and then some of these will also have recurring money. So like this, for example, the armor shop gives you two bucks every round during the income phase. 
to build these, by the way, same thing. You need to make sure that you are putting them corner to corner with something else. When you cover something, you get it. And then many of these will have money or symbols. So, for example, this magician here gives me one of the joy, a little heart, and one thrill. That's a one time when you buy it, same way that rides work. If it's money, though, it's during the, uh, the income phase. So I get my new money and I go through all the steps five times. And then at the end, we check for the score. You need to be at least up to this step right here. If you want to get the bonus five points for being particularly high up on a track, and then the number of rides includes all of these, but not the stands uh, for getting six or seven gets you five points, eight or more gets you ten bonus points. That's it. Have the most points at the end of the game, and you are going to be the winner. I should mention uh, one final thing just to, for clarification's sake. If you choose to go over here to the realtor, you pay three bucks. You take the top one of either stack. You can look at both sides. And then you either attach it to this side or this one. And yes, they can keep growing. You can then attach another one on the outside of that and so on. When you first add it on, you need to make sure the trees go on. Okay? That should do it. That's enough explanation for you to understand what's going on. Let's go ahead and go, uh, go back up top and uh, I'll tell you what I think of it. There we go. That is Ten Penny Park. So let's talk about it, shall we? Let's begin with the theme and the setting, of course. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of these uh, build up a, an amusement park game. I've played a handful of them, five or six, and I like a couple of them. But it, that theme in and of itself doesn't really do it for me. In this one, I think they're doing a really nice job tying in together everything you are doing or supposed to be doing. Constructing, advertising, landscaping. They all work well. They are... Very straightforward and tie into what's happening nicely. The aesthetics. This game is stunningly beautiful. The artwork is superb. But above and beyond that, the thing that really blew me away is the construction quality of the game. The cardboard in this game is some of the best cardboard I've seen in a long time. Money tokens, victory point tokens, all of it made from very high quality, very thick cardboard that yet punches out beautifully. So kudos to the company on that one. They, they really knocked it out of the park when it comes to the production here. Replay value, I think is pretty good, but there's a couple of things that I wish were a little more interesting. So for example, the hidden goals in this game. It's the stack of cards, you get three at the beginning, from those three you keep two. They're just not very interesting. They're sort of samey. Um, things like, there's a whole suite of them, which is, have three undersea attractions from one specific pile. Three prehistoric attractions, three sci-fi attractions, fantasy, Old West. And then three of these that are, end up the highest on the joy track, the thrill track, the awe track. Same thing. Then the other ones, it's, you know, one ride of each color. Uh, remove this many trees, don't remove this many trees, that sort of thing. There are always three victory points, so I'm assuming they're all meant to be equally difficult. I don't know if that's the case or not, but I guess they are. Um, there's just not, not a lot of pizzazz there. And I guess they give you a little direction early on in the game, but you don't really want to get too focused on these and lose sight of the bigger picture, which is money which I'll talk about in just one little bit. So, again, I wish that was a little more interesting. I think you need something like this. I like having hidden scoring. I think you need some hidden scoring. This is just not exciting. The other thing is, when I talk about replay value, I talk about uh, the scalability of a game, the number of players, and how well that works. This is 2-3-4. I think 2 is fine, not a lot of competition, sort of a subdued game. Three, I think, is the sweet spot, because at four, you run the risk of having someone, of, of a situation happen to someone, where they really get hosed in the game. Where they're planning for something, and they're either a couple bucks short, or there's one tree in the way, so they need to do that first, and by the time it comes back around to them, the thing they were planning for is gone. And you can only buy that thing once per season. So... 
that can feel pretty bad. And if it happens late enough in the game, say the fifth round, the fifth uh, month, it's a blow. It's It can be very punishing for you to clear space or grab money or do something. And then before you go, someone takes the thing you were planning on. It's going to pull you back or, or keep you from advancing on some of the tracks. Waste previous actions like clearing actions. It it could happen. So four is a little punishing. Um, three gives you some of that tension, that turn angst, without too many possibilities for someone to completely hose you because the thing's gone. There are the same number of spaces with four players as there are with two players, okay? So just think about that. Uh, okay, game arc. Five rounds, like I said. The game length is good. Five somehow feels like you don't get to go enough times a little bit. But it doesn't seem like it should be more than that. I think it's just a little bit of a rhythm thing. The rhythm's a little funny. Um, but it works well. The game is not... It's not that it's not smooth. It's just five rounds feels a little uh, strange. Having said that, though, the logistics of doing everything in this game is engaging. It's fun. Money is paramount in this game. You want to get that money early. But then just doing everything. Looking at your board and going, well... I need to remove these trees. I need to expand this way. I really want to make sure I cover this. I want to buy that. I want to rotate this thing and, and make that inexpensive because I'll be first so I can buy that. That's all fun. And that's an, an engaging. It's just the game arc, There, there's something to it. And once you've played the game a few times, I think you'll realize there are certain things you want to do first. The game... Feels like it could suffer from a bit of a runaway leader problem. If I get my income up quickly and early, I'm making more money than you, which translates to more control than you, more advertising. It, it, it compounds. Ease of play. Good player aids in this game. Good rule book for the most part. There's one thing I couldn't find in the rule book having to do with setup. Uh, which I figured out is uh, the stacks of buildings, they can go out in any order. They can be random. Obviously, all the same color together. And that wasn't really explained, as far as I could tell, in the rule book. okay? I just, the first time I played the game, I just set it up exactly as it says in the rule book, which is fine, but it could be random. So, that was missing, um, as far as I can tell, again. I think the turn structure is easy to follow, it's interesting... Uh, it's logical, so it works out well. Lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. Turn order, like I said, can be punishing sometimes. At five rounds, that can be hard to recover from, though the choices are interesting. The game is very tactical. I should point that out. It is not, there's not a lot of strategy here necessarily. It's very much a game about reacting to what's going on. And in fact, I would say that's the one thing. That the two-player variant, or not, there's no variant, it's exactly the same. The two-player game suffers from the fact that you are not, it is not as demanding of you in your tactics, in your reacting. And therefore, there are fewer highs and lows. It's a nice game. It, it buzzes along nicely. It's enjoyable. Uh, even relaxing sometimes. At four... You have the possibility for the very high highs and the very low lows, right? But it is a very tactical game. I think the hidden goals are enough to give you a small push, which is fine, but they are kind of lame and boring. Um, and then lastly, the money thing. Like I said, the money is just incredibly important. And I think that's going to, once everyone's played... If somebody is allowed to get a couple of the hot dog stands and build some of the money-making tiles, they can pay for advertising, get those points, and probably dominate. That's probably my favorite phase of the game, in fact, the advertising step. Because it is different than a lot of these other uh, build-up, you know, polyomino structure thing. That one I haven't seen in other games, as far as I can tell. Um, 
And I find that engaging, the idea that you can give up that, doing that short term, giving up money right now that maybe I can use next round, but I'm buying victory points. It's basically what the advertising is. You can just buy victory points right now, and then whatever victory points you get at the end of the game. So I enjoy that step. I think it's clever. I think it's interesting. It's just, if I'm making money earlier than you, I can advertise more, and then when I get my income, I get all of it again. So I can buy faster, probably, and I can... More advertising, and that, that compounds. So, money being hugely important and tight in the game, and a slight runaway leader possibility, I think are the two main things that hurt it for me a little bit. Having said that, I do enjoy the experience of playing the game. I'm a very tactical player by nature. I am someone who is going to enjoy great artwork, fantastic component quality, who is going to enjoy doing my own thing. And if you get in my way, I'm like, oh, I was going to do that, but that's fine. I'll adjust to something else. So while the game isn't perfect, and I was really hoping for a superb game, looking at this cover, reading about it, seeing sort of what was going on in the game, I was thinking, you know, I don't really like theme park games, but I think this one's going to be a fantastic game. I don't think it's fantastic, but it's good, and I enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, I would recommend it. If you do like this theme, if you are someone who um, enjoys the, you know, if that little polyomino overview looked interesting to you, if you do want that sort of tight money grip on you, then I think you're going to like it. And it does not overstay its welcome because it's five rounds and they're, they go by pretty quickly, right? The game's going to list, uh, it lists 45 to 75 minutes. And I think that's right. You're going to play for about an hour and then you're done. So there you go. Ten Penny Parks. Neat stuff. I like it and I would recommend it. Uh, so this is going to get a 7.5 from me. That's a seal of approval for Ten Penny Parks. Everybody, thank you very much for checking this one out with me. I appreciate it. My name is Z Garcia. I'm going to see you on the next one.